Colleen Hurston, and I'm glad you can join me this evening because my guest is a woman whose fabulous talent knows no boundaries, whether it's in the movies, television, or cable, where she was nominated for a Golden Globe, an Emmy, and an Ace Award. Her sizzling nightclub performances has made her one of the top attractions wherever she appears. She's sexy, she's smart, and she's successful. In the movie, she's the ultimate Jewish mother. In real life, she's the ultimate performer. She's Lainey Kazan. We'll meet her right after these messages, so please stay right there. I knew this guy, he was a line mechanic. He said that if you rough cut the gutters just enough to clear the nozzle, you could remove the flame holders without pulling the whole engine. Cut the time down from three days to a couple of hours. Everybody went nuts. You know what? He was right. It works. Now he's got the whole Air Force doing it his way. Aim high, Air Force. From the McGruff Files, the Philadelphia story. In certain parts of Philadelphia, things were uh, rough. Areas were run down, crime and drugs were out of hand, and honest folks felt like prisoners in their own homes. People decided to work with police to turn things around. Weekly meetings led to cleanup projects and folks working together. Soon, the neighbors had their neighborhood back. That's what happens when people and police work together. Write this down, and I'll show you how you can help uh, take a bite out of crime. Right now, there's a severe shortage of blood in blood banks and hospitals because people are afraid that they will get AIDS by giving blood. A blood donor never comes into contact with anyone else's blood, so there's absolutely no way that donating blood can infect a person with any disease, and that includes AIDS. I'm urging everyone who can to give blood and help save lives. The need is urgent. A message for health and safety from the Will Rogers Institute, White Plains, New York. I'm Arlene Herson, and my very special guest is Lainey Kazan. We're here at Trump Castle in Atlantic City. And thank you for taking the time. I know how busy you are Oh, here. it's my pleasure. I'm not that busy. <laughs> not this okay, week. Okay, well, you're in Atlantic City actually every night, though. You're every on night, stage twice here. a night. And you're singing, and you're singing wonderfully, and thank your you. act is incredible. But most of the people out there um, who are seeing you now don't know you as a singer. They know you as an actress in My Favorite Year, in Beaches, Delta Force, Carrie and the Hendersons, that was wonderful, <laughs> by the way. But how do you feel about being more popular today as a movie actress and as a singer? It's interesting. Um, I like it. It's given me the visibility to uh, you know, ensure that I have an audience, and a younger audience at that, because the, uh, an older audience is aware of, of me as a singer. But I have these, these young people, from, I mean very young, because I've also done a lot of those children's shows like Harry and the Hendersons and Pinocchio for, uh, you know, Showtime for uh, Shelley Duvall's Fairy Tale Theater. So I have all these wonderful children and, and, and teenagers who also know me as only an actress. I, I feel that I needed to sing. I needed for me to sing again for many reasons. One primary reason was for my soul. Uh, and the secondary reasons are for business because, uh, as we were discussing before we got on camera, I've, I've played all these older ethnic women and I'm good at it and I love it. But it's not all I can do. And in this business where we, you know, we do one thing well, we make our money for everybody in that particular, you know, genre, and then that's, that, that's assumed that's what you do and you'll be doing that until the day you die. <laughs> and I'm not like that. I'm, I'm a woman who needs to always get better at what I'm doing, to change, to grow, to, to enjoy the changes. And so I said, you know, I have to sing again and show people 
you know, who Lainey Kazan is, not Lainey Kazan as, because that's a joy in itself, but there's nothing quite like, like singing. It's all of me. It's, it's the passion in me. It's, it's, it's who I am. You know, it's interesting because when you say you want to do all these different things, a lot of us want to do different things. I mean, you sing wonderfully, and there are a lot of good singers out there that want to be actresses, but there aren't too many people that can cross that road, that can do everything and do everything so well. As I mentioned in, in the introductions, I mean, no matter what medium you're in, you win awards. But people don't recognize you. <clears throat> I almost, I mean, I, I know what you look like as a singer, and I've, I've seen pictures of you, and I recognize you as Lainey Kazan. But when I see you in the movies, you look so different. First of all, you're, you're beautiful, and you're oh, sexy, and you're you. slim. But, you know, in some of the movies, you're really this fat Jewish lady that doesn't at all resemble this sexy Dynamo. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I did that initially. I played the woman in my favorite. It all started with Francis Coppola in One from the Heart, which was the first time I played an unattractive person. You know, all those years when I was singing, if I ever got a role, it was usually I played a hooker or a madam or somebody who was taking her clothes off. So I thought, well, that's not, that, no, th I won't ever be taken seriously doing that. And when Francis Coppola hired me to play this wonderful character in, in an extraordinary cast of actors, with an extraordinary cast of actors, in One from the Heart, that was like the beginning of my real true acting career. And then when I got my favorite year, it was, it, it was my desire to prove that I was really a, a, an actress, um, a good actress at that, and someone to be taken seriously and to be reckoned with as an actress, because I had been this underground actress. I was a member of the actor's studio. I was really respected by my peers, but the people out in the world didn't know what I did. So it was a chance, and I did it so well that I got hoist by my own petog, so to speak, you know? Um, okay, and you won an Emmy. You know, I, it, it's funny, because when you talk about my favorite year, it's very fresh in my mind, because I rented the video, and I saw it two nights ago, okay? Anybody out there, if you haven't seen Lainey Kazan in my favorite year, get the video. It was wonderful. Your portrayal of the Jewish mother when Peter O'Toole comes for dinner was the highlight. Does it really, Swanee? Ma. He's an actor, not a river. Swanee, can I talk frank to you? Certainly, Belle. Uh -uh. They said to me, you can't play this part. I mean, Mel Brooks said, Lainey Kazan playing this part. What are you, crazy? I said, I'll be back. And I went home, and I put my hair in that hairdo, and I got a makeup man to put my makeup on and give me prosthesis. I wore a double chin, and I wrinkles for days. I, I mean, it took me three or four hours to do my makeup for that and for Beaches. I mean, Beaches, I sat in that chair for many hours when I did The Older Lady. And it's fun, and as I, you become the character, not only internally, but externally, when you look at yourself in the mirror and see an older woman, and you know what that feels like all of a sudden. It's, it's, it's a duality of nature, you know. Interesting. In Beaches, you play Bette Midler's mother, and uh, you had lost some weight. And I said, not only did you pad the face, you padded the body a little bit. Um, and you were the, st the ultimate stage mother at that point. But well, we're going to take a break, because I want to find out in real life, you know, what was it like Lainey Kazan, the star? Did okay. you have the ultimate stage mother? So <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> we're speaking with Lainey Kazan. We're here at Trump Castle in Atlantic City, and we'll be right back after these messages. Guard and reserve employees are gone, but it's even tougher for them. Be a hero. Give your employees the freedom to protect ours. Every year, thousands of babies die from choking, suffocating, or other breathing emergencies. Just imagine how many of them could be saved. If only they came with instructions. Please learn American Red Cross Infant and Child CPR. 
American Red Cross. We help you help others. There was a time when people helped their neighbors, and together they built a stronger community. This spirit lives on today in NeighborWorks, a unique partnership of local residents, business, and government leaders. NeighborWorks volunteers have rebuilt over 100,000 homes, restoring pride to millions of neighbors. So help a neighbor and a nation join NeighborWorks, reversing decline, rebuilding pride. Just a fraction of what we spend dining out could help pick up the tab for a good cause. A small part of what we spend on sports could help keep our community in shape. Or some of our time on the phone could help answer society's problems. Won't you get involved? By giving 5% of your income and volunteering five hours per week, you can really help your community. This year, make it your goal to give five. What you get back is immeasurable. about you yeah. and he's looking for a kid to star in his new movie let's go well don't just sit there come on this is my break into the big yeah and how many times do i have to tell you don't wear that costume on the beach i am not paying your money you know get off my back Fiona. oh my god i'm dying from heat prostration i can't breathe what are you a camel or something come on skedaddle i, I gotta have a sip who is that woman what woman it's no woman that's my mother Let's go, Leona! Coming. I am schwitzing from here to high heaven. Come on! I'm coming! I got splinters in my toes. Oh, God, I hate Atlantic City. Okay, now there you were in Atlantic City. There we said we were going to talk about your mother, but there you are playing Bette Midler's mother. She, of course, is, is a young girl at that time. What was that, that scene like for you? Oh, it was delicious. First of all, Gary Marshall is one of the most wonderful, funny, warm men and as a director he was a delight and he made it fun for me i loved the character i understood the character and because i had a mother very much like the woman i played um oh, uh, uh, my mother who is very much alive and very wonderful and in fact she just left here yesterday she was a quietly aggressive show business mother uh a little like this woman um that I played and very, very uh, nervous and neurotic. So all those scenes I, I, I actually created for myself based on my mom. Um, my mother would have these unbelievable hyperventilations and palpitations and I thought wouldn't that be funny if the kid was in control of the woman. It wasn't written that way, but that's how I interpreted it. And I discussed it with Gary and we decided that would be very funny. I, it, I wasn't like that with my mother. But I made, because this child was so aggressive, I thought it might be very funny if the child was in control of the mother. And that was the humor I saw in my third eye so that I could play the character. I always, in being a comedian, I always know what's funny. I look at it, paint the picture, and then forget that I painted it and live it in the real sense, because I never play it for its humor. But I know that the humor is there on the drawing board. Yeah. Am and I making the, myself yeah, clear? Yeah, absolutely. And the humor was there. I mean, you, Bette Midler, and the young woman who plays Bette Midler as, as a child. Oh, uh, is that amazing? Incredible. Absolutely incredible. But now, Lainey Kazan is a child. A crazy stage mother taking you from place to place. What was Lainey Kazan like? When, you, when was it you said to, to yourself, I've got to do this. I've got to sing. I've got to be on the stage. I was a child entertainer. Never a child star, but I was a child entertainer. From the time I was three and a half years old, I danced. My first uh, uh, performance was at the Academy of Music in Brooklyn. I was about maybe four. And I performed and on Star Time. That, there was a television show called Star Time. I did all those children's shows until I was about 14. And then I said, I hate this. I didn't want it. it wasn't the popular thing to do when I was growing up to be a child entertainer. I wanted to be like everybody else from Brooklyn. I wanted to be a normal, healthy kid who sat on the street corner and hung out with her friends. And so I resented the fact that I was different. And I tried very hard during my high school years to be an average person. 
I never made it. <laughs> Something was awry. <laughs> Something was wrong. And so when it came time to go to college, my family wanted me to go to college. And I, um, I got a drama scholarship to Hofstra University. And I was good. I didn't ever really knew how good I was. So I was always in all the school plays. And Francis Coppola was the director and the head of this whole uh, show, supposedly, at uh, Hofstra, you know. And I began performing there. And my father passed away when I was in my sophomore year. And that propelled me to really make it my choice, my life choice, because I needed an escape. I needed a place to put my, my feelings and my emotions and my, my, my need to explore what I was feeling and, and the material that I was given as an actress, because I began as an actress. I did not sing. When I was very young, I, I danced and I sang. I was a tap dancer and I was a singer. And then I stopped that and I became an actress, a serious actress. I did a lot of Shakespeare. I did a lot of Lorca and uh, uh, all kinds of uh, comedic things as well uh, in college. And it wasn't until I came out of college, during my summers at college, I would work for Lee Goober at um, the, the, the summer tents. In fact, I worked out here in my, my junior year in college. I worked at Valley Forge, music fairs, and I did all that. And when I graduated, I realized that I had no choice. I had made a choice somewhere in college to become a speech therapist later on because I, my mom always said, you know, have something to fall back on. So I did that. I got my degree in speech therapy and I have a teaching credential, but I never had to use it. <laughs> thank, thank God. <laughs> thank God. But, but you know, it must have been very frustrating for you because probably, you know, what we read about where you got the big break was as an understudy for Barbara Streisand mm -hmm. in Funny Girl. Now, you understudied for three years? No, for a year and three for months. Year and, okay, but it must have been, I mean, there you are waiting for the star to be sick. Um, it must be very frustrating. Well, at first it was a joy. I mean, I had been working in a nightclub. I was hired to play a small part in the show. And then later on I was asked to understudy Barbara. And I, I thought, you know, I won't be a very good understudy. I don't think that I have that kind of... Because I had known the Broadway uh, scene. I knew that understudies were like paid civil servants and they did their job they did it exactly the way the leading lady or leading man did their job and they went to work I didn't want that I wanted to do it my way I was an artist I had studied I had my own persona so I was pretty feisty and uh, I told I had uh, Ray Stark who was the producer of the show signed me to a seven-year movie contract when I auditioned and um, I explained to him that I needed to do my own thing. So he was very supportive. And during that year, it became more and more of a problem because I, my need to further my career became uppermost in my mind. And I wanted to do it my way. And of course, Barbara never got sick. She was healthy and she was a professional. And when I finally got on, it resounded so strongly all across the country. I was, I made a real success out of going on, I went on twice in one day on February 8th, 1967. More people have said they have seen me. It's, it's real interesting because I only did twi two performances, but I got an enormous, enormous amount of publicity. And um, then I, it, it was difficult because after that, people compared me to Barbara for years and years and years, and it, it made me ill. Hmm, that's interesting. But they don't anymore. No. And that changed your life. Lainey Kazan is Lainey Kazan. Most people don't even know anymore, quite frankly, that that's what you did, that mm. you were the understudy, because you had become such an important personality in your own right. We're going to take a break. We're going to talk more about Lainey Kazan. Thank you. <laughs> We're with Lainey Kazan at Trump Castle. We'll be right back after these messages. It's time for You Lost Your Life with your host, Christ Dummies, Vince and Larry. Hey! Hello. Hey. <laughs> Welcome to the show that proves if you don't buckle your safety belt, the loser is you. That's right, Vince, and by not buckling up, you could end up in places you never dreamed. Like correction! Or the emergency room! Plus, Larry, if you're not buckled up, you could maybe take a ride in a beauty like this. Stay tuned! 
You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. I was going to take a job with an engineering firm in New York. I got a better offer. I'm building schools overseas with the Peace Corps. The pace is a little slower than New York, but here I'm getting grassroots experience I couldn't get anywhere else. The way I look at it, the world can wait two years for another 40-story smoked glass high-rise. Peace Corps, the toughest job you'll ever love. Everyone makes mistakes, Matthew. <laughs> Don't pay any attention to the other children. For this bright six-year-old, the ABCs have never been as simple as ABC. Where do you go when you're different from the other kids? He got help at a Center for Learning Disabilities. They got help from the United Way. All because the United Way got help from you. The United Way, it brings out the best in all of us. Children love to be out in the sun, but remember that their skin can sunburn easily. And bad sunburns in childhood can lead to skin cancer as an adult. So protect your kids with hats and clothing. Avoid direct sun when it's most intense from about 10 to 3. And always use a sunscreen with a protection factor of 15 or more. You too, Daddy. Help your children enjoy the outdoors in good health and safety. For a free booklet, write the Will Rogers Institute, White Plains, New York. I'm Arlene Herson, and here we are with Lainey Kazan at Trump Castle in Atlantic City. And that's where you're performing now. This is where you're on stage with your dynamite act. But you know, there's so much to Lainey Kazan. Uh, there's so much that you've done, and so you've come so far, and you've really done so much of it yourself. When, when you were starting out, I mean, you also, which I don't think most people are aware of, you have a daughter. I certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's now in college. But when you were starting out, and really making it. She was a baby. You were a single mom. I've been a single mom for uh, since she was two. Well, how did you manage? Building it was a not easy. Doing... I um, well, how did I manage? First of all, I loved her to death, <laughs> and uh, I took her everywhere with me until it came time for her to go to school, and I decided that I needed a place to call home where I could do what I do best, and that was singing at the time. And I had a very, very wonderful relationship with Playboy Enterprises, with Hugh Hefner, with Victor Lowndes, and they gave me a golden opportunity. I mean, it was a, a major uh, coup for me. I, I ran and operated two nightclubs for them for three and a half years, one in Los Angeles and one in New York much later on. But it gave me a home base. It brought me to Los Angeles. It centered me. I had working hours, and it began my career, really, in, in the uh, television and film media, because in my little nightclub called Laney's Room, which was my creative home, all the producers, all the directors, everybody came in and got to know who I was yeah. again. Which and I had had some bad times uh, right before uh, that all happened. I had some financial setbacks and I had some health problems. So this was a whole like a, re a, a, a rebirth for me. And it was, it was difficult but I always had wonderful help. Uh, I, I imported young girls from Australia to help me because I didn't want them to ever leave the country. They were in bondage, you know, <laughs> because I, I had, I didn't want to have somebody new every week taking care of my daughter. And it's interesting because I always thought this was a difficult time for her and I've apologized to her. I said, honey, I'm so sorry you grew up, you know, in nightclubs and everything. She said, mommy, those were the most wonderful, happy years of my life. I always felt the musicians and the people you travel with were my surrogate family. In your act, one of the songs you sing, and I don't, if I can get the title exactly right, is uh, I'm Living Alone and Liking It. If I live that's... alone, I'm living alone and I like it. Yeah, okay, <laughs> well, do you? At times, at times I like it. It's, you know, I went from my parents' home to my husband's home to me and my daughter. I've never, ever lived alone. And, 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 and during that time, had a couple of live-in friends. Um, <clears throat> so um, this is the first time I'm alone in my life. And at first, it was very, very dramatic for me and traumatic. I hated it. I hated it a few months before it happened. When my daughter was going off to college, I, I 
it was like a death in the family. And I tried not to do that for her sake because I want her to be free. I want her to experience her freedom and, and the joy of living a, a wonderful um, life on her own with making her own decisions. Now, after the initial shock of it all, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying um, doing things when I want to do them. And okay. it's, it's fun. And I'll also, I can come here and travel and do what I do. You uh, know? But what about, we only have a little bit of time left, and it's unfair to bring this up at this point, but what about a social life? What about, you know, you are a headliner, you're a star, um, dating. I think men are you, afraid of me. Yeah, that's what I was I would assume that you would intimidate. I think men are afraid of me. I mean, it, it's sad. I, I, have, I have a couple of men in my life who are also in, in the business, as they say, you know, in, in, in theater or major stars uh, who I'll go out with who have, we have similar understanding of life. Um, but as far as a relationship, they're just as difficult to have a relationship with as I am because they're on the road or they're doing this or doing that. So I have my, my close, intimate friends, but I have not found uh, the love of my life. Or w would I? I don't know. I, I don't know if that can happen at this point in my life. I, I hope so. Why not? I mean, Because I think I'm such an independent person. I think I scare most men and I'm really a vulnerable sensitive pussycat you know and it's but I come off as such a, a take charge person because I've had to I've had to take care of myself I have to take care of my daughter I've had to take care of my financial business I I'm a corporation here I am you know and I know there are a lot of women like that but I, I, I was a borderline case you know I was never from the whole woman's lib um, Group. I, I was lib. I was born liberated. I, I never fought for liberation. I fought for other people to be liberated, but I was just a little bit before that. My my generation. So, it's it's interesting. I've I've had to be something so someone so strong. Okay, we only have thirty seconds left. I oh can't my believe goodness. it. It's not fair. Best case scenario, Lainey Kazan, personal, career. What what would you like? I'd like to find a friend to live with, a, 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 a love, a love. I'd like to have the kinds of roles that satisfy me and certainly satisfy my audiences. And I want to be healthy, happy, and I want my daughter to be healthy and a successful human being. Wow, well, all those things I hope come true. I know that one of the things I wanted was to interview you, and, and it's oh, come true. And I've had me. a joyous time. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you very thank much. You. I hope that you've enjoyed the time we've spent here with Lainey Kazan. I know that I certainly have, and I hope you'll join me again next week. Meantime, good night. Hope to see you then.